Okay, so um, some people define synthetic biology as approaches to uh, applying engineering principles to biological systems to make building things out of biology easier. And so oftentimes those people talk about an engineering cycle by which you sort of come up with a design and you sort of turn that into a more uh, specific set of things you want to build. You try building it, you construct those things, then you test them like Austin was talking about. If it, if it works, you're done. If it doesn't work, you iterate. And so I want to talk a little bit about that construction phase, the testing phase. Um, when I look at synthetic biology labs today, what I see is something that's kind of like a classic machine shop. I see experts walking amongst expensive pieces of machines following blueprints to build little components that they then assemble. And I wonder, hey, this is supposed to be modern engineering. Why isn't this process more automated? And then someone says, oh, well, it is. There's lab automation. It's a whole field that's been around since 1980. Okay, how much do those robots cost? They're like $200,000, $100,000. Not very many people know how to use them. It takes sort of experts to figure them out and to program them. They're expensive. They're closed. They're proprietary. And so, okay, that's fine. Let's step back a second. When the synthetic biologists are in their lab constructing the designs they want to test, a lot of times there's a fair amount of overlap in the operations that the biologists are using. So um, protocol kits exist. They're sort of ubiquitous already. And uh, they're semi-standardized, right? You get the same set of uh, reaction components and instructions in each kit. And in fact, you might be able to chain together a whole set of kits to get through the entire construction phase, depending on what you're trying to do. So maybe it's too simple, but a typical iGEM team might be able to get through their entire summer just using kits from various suppliers without actually knowing any of the biochemistry. So it's, it strikes me that a lot of the operations that are used in the construction phase to construct the system for testing are already semi-standardized, just not automated. Or if they are automated, you need this expensive robotic platform. So how can we make that part cheaper? Would it make sense to make it cheaper? Well, I think it would. And I think that uh, we could take a couple lessons from popular prototyping tools in electronics and three-dimensional printing. So the two examples I put up here is this one uh, famous uh, or semi-famous popular 3D printing platform, a MakerBot, and also this uh, electronics prototyping platform, an Arduino. They have two prints, two, a couple properties I think are valuable in lab tools. One is that they're low cost and they're designed for non-experts. And when, you do, when, you, when you're forced to build tools for non-experts and that are cheap, you end up not being able to build tools that are as powerful, but they're easier to work with, easier to get involved with, and because they don't, they're not very expensive, it's okay if you break it. So they tend to be used more, hacked more, and they'd be better documented because there's a larger user base. So I think that we're actually well positioned right now to build cheap lab automation tools that implement not entire protocol stacks like a biomech would, but individual protocols themselves, and then to stitch together those protocol robots into a large sort of system that completes the construction phase in an automated way. Perhaps not in a high throughput way, but in an automated way nonetheless, freeing the synthetic biologists to focus on more conceptual aspects of what they're trying to build instead of maneuvering the pipette. Um, so I think that uh, the, the philosophy is something like build the Unix operating system out of a 3D printing system, except instead of extruding plastic, tape a pipette in there with an actuated dispensing mechanism. It, so just use a normal pipette with a $1,000 robotic uh, platform for printing plastic, and throw in a $100, $200 PCR machine, a little centrifuge, uh, and build the rest. And I think you're on the way to building a, a pretty cheap, modular, low-throughput lab automation system that is so cheap it's okay to break. Anyone can have one, and uh, it's well documented because there's lots and lots of users. So it doesn't exist yet, but it definitely could exist. And I think that it could exist for, I don't know, um, really, really basic stuff. We see how it all works, like going from a gene that you get synthesized to having it expressed and uh, RFU units, fluorescent units measured. We, I think we could build that tool chain in like a year and a half, two years, get it working, show that it works. Get, get some iGEM students working on it, get it out there, and who knows, maybe in a couple of years, everyone has a benchtop sort of tool chain, kind of like Unix tools uh, in the Unix operating system, stitching together their systems and measuring, doing all the measurement automatically. So you can step back, get around this automate, or get around the synthetic biology engineering cycle a lot faster, a lot easier. So that's my proposal. I think we should do it. Uh, the UI Bio folks are already building pretty low-cost tools. I think we can mash it all up. So thanks a lot. Woo.